Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch stores on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Well, good news, everyone! My improving financial situation has allowed me to buy the domain SYLRanch.tv. It's not really ready for prime time yet, so if you go there, you're just going to find a placeholder page. But I hope by my next video, I'll have it looking like a real website. Now, a bit of uh, housekeeping. Oh, man. My original Twitter account was suspended for reasons... If you'd been following that account, I'd uh, ask that you follow my new one, which is at SYL Tales. Please do follow this account, because lacking any money for marketing, uh, social media is very, pretty much where I do my marketing. So follow at SYL Tales and share my videos both on Twitter and other social media. Social media is how I grow, so like, subscribe, and share, please. And that Twitter account, again, is at SYL Tales. One of the benefits of being on the planet for almost 55 years is that you gain perspective. Part of this is the perspective to be able to identify scientific nonsense when you see it. Let's go down a list of doomsday scenarios of my lifetime that have never once come to pass. Now, I was born in 1965. The first prediction listed here is a year later. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive list. These are just the ones, doomsday scenarios, that have been around for a long time. And in general, doomsday scenarios have been around for centuries, if not more. So our list begins in 1966, in which it was predicted that oil will be gone in 10 years. In 1967, it was predicted dire famine will occur by 1975. In 1968, overpopulation will cause mass starvation and death. In 1969, everyone will disappear in a cloud of blue steam by 1989. I had to look that one up because I'm not really sure what was meant by the blue steam thing. I think that it was a reference to opposition to nuclear power. Yeah, 1970, that was a really busy year for predictions. Global national, uh, natural resources will be totally depleted by 2000. Urban cities will require gas masks by 1985. Nitrogen buildup will make all land unusable. Decaying pollution will kill all, world, all fish worldwide. Killer bees will kill everyone. There will be an ice age by 2000. Americans will be subject to water rationing by 1974 and food rationing by 1980. 1971, there will be an ice age by 2020 or 2030. In 1972, that was increased to an ice age by 2070. In 1974, space satellites showed a new ice age in the future, and ozone depletion is a great peril to life. In 1976, scientific consensus, remember that one, agreed that the planet cooling is imminent and famine is imminent. In 1977, the U.S. Department of Energy said that oil will peak in the 1990s. In 1978, there is no end in sight to the 30-year global cooling trend. In 1980, acid rain will kill all life in lakes, rivers, and streams, and peak oil will then happen in 2000. In 1988, there will be regional droughts in the 1990s. Temperatures in Washington, D.C. will hit record highs. The Maldive Islands will be underwater by 2018. In 1989, rising sea levels will obliterate nations by 2000. And New York's West Side Highway will be underwater by 2019. In 1996, predictions of peak oil in 2020. In 2000, predictions that children won't know what snow is. In 2002, there will be a famine in 10 years if we don't stop eating fish, meat, and dairy products. And peak oil will then be in 2010. 
In 2004, the prediction was that Britain will be like Siberia in 2024, and the polar ice caps will have melted completely. In 2005, Manhattan will be underwater by 2015. In 2006, super hurricanes will wreak havoc on all the coasts and much inland. In 2008, the Arctic will be ice-free by 2013, and then also in the same year, the prediction that the Arctic will be ice-free by 2018. 2009, Prince Charles said that we have 96 months, roughly four years, to save the planet from global warming. And at the same time, the UK Prime Minister said that we have 50 days to save the planet from catastrophe. And of course, the Arctic will be ice-free by 2014. In 2013, the ice, Arctic ice will be ice-free by 2015. In 2014, there are only 500 days, about 1.4 years, before climate chaos. And finally, in 2019, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, always referred to on this program as Red Cortez because it fits, claimed that we have 12 years to save the world from climate change and... Climate cultists used an abused child, Greta Thunberg, to give outraged speeches claiming that it's really going to happen this time. In my 54 years, precisely none of these predictions has ever come to pass. Zip, zilch, nada, they have all been wrong. There is absolutely no reason to worry about modern climate cultist predictions any more than the various cultists of 1966. What individuals call climate science isn't science at all. It in no way follows the scientific method and is therefore not a science, but rather a religion. I've discussed this in my video, Debunked Climate Science is Not Science, link to that below as well. Note that this is a bitshoot only video, as YouTube will not allow me to upload it. It is, nevertheless, one of my highest viewed videos. Generations after mine are now becoming enraged with the mess that our parents left us. Never mind that in the civilized world, these generations lived the most privileged lives in all of human history. Never mind that these generations used technology that was entirely invented by their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents. Never mind that these generations can't imagine the hardship they'd endure if they were forced to give it all up in order to fight a non-existent threat. The reason that we're here is that beginning with my generation, our educational system abandoned education in favor of indoctrination. Now, I have an entire series of videos on this called America's Broken Schools, link to it in my description box, as well as a, a number of ancillary videos on the subject. I believe it may now be as much as 10 videos. Given my lifelong association with education, and uh, that includes a three-year stint as an IT instructor at the place that shall not be named, I'll no doubt be making more as time goes on. Our children are no longer taught how to read, write, nor perform the most basic math. They are instead indoctrinated with ideas such as communism is good and that the planet will end in 12 years. Actually, I guess in about five days, maybe six, four by the time this gets up, it's only going to be 11 years. There is a solution to this problem, but it requires immediate radical change. First, our educational system must be completely abolished from kindergarten all the way through the PhD level. Now, I've discussed possible reforms in my video, Fixing the Broken System, link below. Suffice to say that the system of indoctrinating our children while teaching them no skills in which to survive the life must simply end. Secondly, the last two or three generations must now self-educate in order to make up for the vast number of subjects that they were never taught. This is particularly challenging for anyone past my generation as they cannot read and therefore making self-education impossible. Now, those of us who can read must now perform volunteer work to tutor illiterate individuals. Now, while teaching someone to read may sound ridiculously difficult, it's really not. People have been doing this informally with each other since the written word was invented. I would therefore issue a challenge to my viewers. If you know someone who is illiterate, 
offer to teach them. Now, if you're a parent, finding a pupil will be as easy as looking to your own children. They cannot read, nor write, nor perform the most basic math. So find an easy but interesting book for your pupil and to begin with. Sit down with them, help them sound out words, and explain the meanings of those words. There is a wealth of possible books to choose from for free on Project Gutenberg. They range from simple to complex works. And I have a link, of course, to Project Gutenberg in my description box. As a first step, I would suggest the McGuffey Reader series of books, as they are intended to start from a reading level basically of illiteracy and move upward. And I have a link to those books in my description box. Beyond that, the sky is the limit. Project Gutenberg hosts over 60,000 ebooks. You can connect Project Gutenberg to your favorite ebook reader or program, allowing to it to search and download ebooks right from inside that program. Alternately, you can just read the books online. I would suggest that when your pupil can understand and read Shakespeare, they have then reached full literacy. If you can't understand and read Shakespeare, you have not yet reached full literacy. But don't worry, the entire Complete works of Shakespeare are on Project Gutenberg for your perusal. We must also teach our uh, young a very basic truth about our elected officials at every level. Every single one, with no exceptions, not even your favorite, are all power-mad sociopathic narcissists. Now, I'm not exaggerating in the slightest. I invite you to look up antisocial personality disorder, which is otherwise known as sociopathy, and a narcissistic personality disorder. In fact, I want you to look it up so much that I included links in my description box. And examine the symptoms. You'll see that even a psychological layman can conclude that they do in fact apply. That our representatives are power mad is obvious, <laughs> and each and every one of them, Presidents, congresspersons, senators, judges, their yes-men and hangers-on, they're nothing but trying to constantly increase their own power. They do not work for you. Unless you've handed them a bribe, sorry, a campaign contribution, they have no idea who you even are. Inside each and every one of them is an emperor of the galaxy from Star Wars screaming, UNLIMITED POWER! They will do anything, even murder, to get that unlimited power. Your elected officials do not work for you. They work solely to obtain unlimited power. And there's a reason for this. In 1887, Lord Acton of Britain wrote something that should be inscribed over the entrance to every government building in the United States. He wrote, Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Our elected officials now have as close to absolute power than at any time in human history. They have far more power than the British aristocracy of 1887. They have near absolute power over every aspect of your life, whether you know it or not. So this craving for ultimate power is why government officials are so keen to pass socialist and communist laws that are completely unconstitutional, particularly the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is a favorite, as it would allow them to complete control over your life in one fell swoop. It would also kill upwards of a billion people on the planet, something that I have discussed in my video, The Green New Deal, Global Famine and the Death of Billions, and again, link to it below. Additionally, both the Green New Deal and other communist programs would turn the U.S. into an unlivable hellhole inside of a decade. And again, I've discussed this at length in my video, Bernie Sanders America, Famine, Hardship, and Death. And there is a link to that in my description box. So in short, power-mad sociopathic narcissists are preying on illiterates in order to give themselves complete control over your life. In the process, they will cause the death of at least a billion people. They will turn the U.S. into something worse than Venezuela. If you think homelessness in Southern California is a problem, just wait until they pass the Green New Deal. And that's all that I really have to say about that. 
I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Sohn. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.